Hey you guys, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. This ad-libbed quote from Roddy Piper accurately sums up one of the main things I love about They Live, the big fight sequence. The one-on-one -on -one fight sequence between Roddy Piper's character, Nada, and Keith David's character, Frank, lasts about six minutes, making it the longest one-on-one -on -one fight scene in movie history. Every time I thought it was over, they started fighting all over again. <laughs> It becomes almost comical and is unlike anything I've ever seen since then. No CGI, no martial arts, just an alleyway brawl between two stubborn alpha males. This scene speaks to society's unwillingness to pay attention to the world around them and the lengths one would have to go to show them what reality actually is. Interestingly, this was only supposed to be a 20 second fight, but director John Carpenter was so impressed he kept the entire scene intact. The extended fight scene is not just a physical display, it sets the stage for understanding why they live is a cult classic. The iconic depictions of social commentary is what's most memorable about they live. In the movie, Nada stumbles upon special sunglasses that reveal hidden messages in billboards and advertising campaigns, magazines, newspapers, and TV news stations. The unique display of this commentary on consumerism, media manipulation, and social control leaves a lasting impact on us all. In this way, the film transcends traditional sci-fi tropes and becomes a powerful tool for social criticisms. Each layer of subtext and symbolism contribute to a thought-provoking experience. Despite being released in 1988, the movie remains remarkably relevant. The criticisms in this film fall into three categories, consumerism, media manipulation, and social control. They Live portrays a world that encourages materialism and conformity. Most people are in debt up to their eyeballs, living paycheck to paycheck, and still desire to consume. Why? Media manipulation. The themes explored in They Live resonate as we navigate today's society. With the influence of advertising, social media, and constant connectivity, the critiques on the impact of media manipulation are more pertinent than ever. The food pyramid was manipulation, the Got Milk campaign was manipulation, on and on. We look to these trusted media sources for accurate information, only to find out that the messaging was bought and paid for by lobbyists and mega corporations. Then at two o'clock in the morning, on a sleepless night, you see a class action lawsuit for something you've been told by one of these so-called sources. The idea of hidden agendas and manipulative influences in media is a theme that should spark conversations in your homes about media literacy. But what's the agenda? Societal control. They Live explores the idea of a hidden ruling class exerting control over society. While metaphorically portrayed as an alien race in They Live, the notion of powerful people controlling society is not so far-fetched anymore. The misconception is that it's a small group of influential people, when in reality, it's a large group of megacorporations and those who run them who will shape the lives of the rest of us, whether we like it or not, or even know it's happening. So is art imitating life, or is life imitating art? Well, They Live is based on the short story, Eight O'Clock in the Morning by Ray Nelson. John Carpenter was inspired by the themes and adapted it for the screenplay. His distinct directorial style uses atmospheric tension to enhance the overall experience. In addition to directing and co-writing, Carpenter also composed the film's score. Oh, and get this, to add an extra layer of authenticity, the crew placed hidden messages on props and signs which were only visible with the special sunglasses used in the film. So yeah, the glasses actually work. But don't worry, you don't need any special glasses to check out the analysis right here. 